Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we are discussing cardiac hypertrophy. Okay, so we've now discussed what cardiac hypertrophy is. It is the growth of the size of the walls of the heart, but it does not involve the division of cells. Instead, what is happening is the cardiomyocytes themselves are becoming bigger. Okay, so let's now talk about different examples of cardiac hypertrophy. Okay, so we'll start with physiological hypertrophy. Okay, so physiological hypertrophy. So there are two major examples of when physiological hypertrophy can uh, happen. And by the way, these are examples of hypertrophy where it's actually supposed to happen. So, one, as you might expect, is if you are some world-class athlete. So if you exercise regularly, then what happens is your heart will gradually grow. So if you start to take up jogging every day, then as you continue it and get better and better, your heart will be growing. And the way that this growth is achieved is that the cells in the heart themselves are hypertrophing. So they're growing themselves. Okay, and what happens in physiological hypertrophy? is if we draw um, a very simple picture, so if we draw the heart like so, we'll draw a simpler picture than the one I had up there. Okay, so this is the heart, and here are just the four chambers of the heart. So we have right atrium, left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. Then basically what you see in physiological hypertrophy is that the um, cells all elongate and the heart will get slightly longer like this. This is probably an over-exaggeration of what actually happens. But the s point is, the heart is actually getting bigger. The size of these chambers is getting bigger. Now, if I draw the s thickness of these walls, so I'll draw this round here to show you the thickness of the walls. The thickness of the walls will not increase too much in this physiological hypertrophy, and we'll see that that's the opposite of what happens in um, in pathological hypertrophy. Okay, so if you exercise regularly, then what can happen is your heart will grow, basically. And it can grow up to um, about 60% of the size of an adult who doesn't do regular exercise. Okay, so some of these world-class athletes will have hearts that are 60% bigger than the hearts of people who don't, um, well, who aren't international athletes. Okay, so this is then called athlete's heart. Okay, so this physiological hypertrophy in response to exercise is known as athlete's heart. Right, there is another example of uh, physiological hypertrophy. Maybe you can guess it. When else would the heart need to have greater function? Oh, and by the way, this is going to increase the function. The point of this is to increase the amount of blood that this heart is capable of uh, pumping around the body. And it's because in athletes, they're going to need uh, a greater supply of blood to the skeletal muscle. Okay, so that's why you get this um, athlete's heart. When else are you going to need to increase uh, your circulation? Okay, well, it's in pregnancy. In pregnant women, you also see a physiological hypertrophy of the heart. So the heart gets bigger, and it's because it now needs to pump enough blood, not just for the woman's body, but also for the uh, fetus's body. Okay, so pr in pregnancy, you get physiological hypertrophy of the heart as well. Now, basically, in physiological hypertrophy, if we draw a single cardiomyocyte out, so let's say this is a single cardiomyocyte. So we've gone to the walls of the heart, maybe let's say the wall of the left ventricle, and we've taken out a cardiomyocyte. What actually happens in physiological hypertrophy? So what happens on the level of these cells is that they get longer. Okay? They also get slightly thicker. So let me show this. They'll get slightly thicker, but their increase in length is much more significant than their increase in thickness, and that's important. So this is what happens in physiological hypertrophy. The length of the cardiomyocytes increases, and also um, the width increases tinily. But basically, we can write this inequality that the change in the length, i.e. how much the 
uh, length of the cardiomyocyte has increased is much greater, well, is greater than the change, delta, in the width, okay? So how much the width has increased is smaller than the uh, change in the length. Okay, right. And because of this, uh, physiological hypertrophy is often also known as eccentric, eccentric um, hypertrophy because you're pulling the, le the um, ends, basically. So eccentric hypertrophy. Okay, right. So, overall, what it means is the heart becomes larger, okay? And now these, all four of these chambers will be capable of accommodating a greater volume of blood. So the amount of blood that the heart can move from the venous side to the arterial side and how much it can pump around the body is going to go up. So physiological hypertrophy results in cardiac function going up, i.e. cardiac output going up, which is the best measure we have of cardiac function. So cardiac output just means if you uh, collect all of the blood that the heart is pumping through it in a minute, that's the cardiac output, the volume of blood that the heart pumps through it in a minute. And in a normal person, adult's heart, um, the cardiac output is usually around 5 litres per minute. But in these people with uh, physiological hypertrophy of the heart, uh, you'll have a greater uh, cardiac output than 5 litres per minute. Right, so now let's turn our attention. Uh, oh, actually, before we turn our attention to um, uh, pathological uh, cardiac hypertrophy, I want to talk about hypertrophic myopathy. Because hypertrophic myopathy, uh, cardiomyopathy um, actually can often be associated with pathological hypertrophy just as well as it can be with, path uh, sorry, it can be associated with physiological hypertrophy just as much as it can be with pathological hypertrophy. And I don't want you to think that uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathies are just associated with pathological cardiac hypertrophy. So I'm going to now discuss um, car, um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, and this is one of the most common causes of sudden cardiac arrest or sudden cardiac death. So hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Right, so... Cardiomyopathy means uh, a disease of the cardiac muscle, okay? And hypertrophic just means that it's going to be associated with the hypertrophy of the heart. Okay, so let's think about this. Basically, what can happen is when the heart hypertrophies, when all of these cardiac muscle cells hypertrophy, what can happen is it can lead to a thickening of the walls of the ventricle. So let's draw our picture of the heart again. So here is our right atrium here. Here is our right ventricle here. Okay, with the pulmonary trunk coming off the right ventricle. Here is the um, left ventricle and the left atrium here. Okay, right. So what is going to happen if this wall, let's say this wall here, starts to thicken? Okay, so I'm, I'll draw this wall as it really is, so I'll give it a thickness. So what's going to happen if this wall starts to thicken? Well, basically, to show this really bluntly, what could happen is this could thicken, this could thicken, okay? And if the walls of the heart start to thicken too much, what they can start to do is occlude... Um, the um, arteries coming out, basically, either the pulmonary trunk coming out of the right ventricle, or as I've shown here, the aorta coming out of the left ventricle. So if you basically thicken the walls of the heart too much, then uh, what you can do is end up occluding uh, the blood vessels that are coming out of the heart, okay? Uh, so what you've got is occlusive, uh, an occlusive or an obstructive cardio, um, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. Okay, so this is an obstructive hypertrophic, hypertrophic, um, cardiomyopathy. Now, what is this going to cause? Well, it's 
pretty obvious what it's going to cause. It's going to stop the blood from being able to get out of the left ventricle into the aorta, basically. And what this is going to lead to is no blood being pumped out of the heart. So what you're going to get is circulatory failure. You're not going to get any blood being delivered to the tissues. Uh, the other name for uh, circulatory failure is also to call it cardiovascular collapse. So you're going to get circulatory failure, which is also called cardiovascular collapse. Okay? And um, what this is also going to lead to is it's going to stop the heart from beating, basically. Once uh, you've obstructed the blood uh, flow out of the heart like this, it stops the heart from beating because the heart doesn't want to contract on blood that just can't go anywhere. So what it's going to cause is the heart to stop beating, and this is a common cause of what's known as sudden cardiac arrest. So cardiac arrest is just when uh, the heart stops beating, okay? Um, sudden cardiac arrest is also called sudden cardiac death. So there are quite a few tales of uh, footballers dying of sudden cardiac uh, arrest. And basically what is happening is because they do a lot of exercise, their hearts are undergoing physiological hypertrophy and they're unlucky enough that it causes an obstructive hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. So the walls of the ventricles uh, thicken up and it obstructs blood from moving out of the ventricles and into the blood vessels. This is going to lead to circulatory failure, cardiovascular collapse, uh, and also it's going to stop the heart beating. So then what will happen is when no blood gets to your brain, you will then die. Okay, so that's uh, sudden cardiac death or sudden cardiac arrest. Now let's talk about uh, pathological hypertrophy. Okay, so this is quite different from the hypotrophic cardiomyopathy. So this is a pathology, it's a pathological event that occurs because of the hypertrophy. Pathological hypertrophy is hypertrophy that occurs because of some other pathological reason. So this is secondary to the hypertrophy, whereas pathological hypertrophy is uh, secondary to another pathology, such as uh, a heart attack is a common example. Okay, so let's now talk about uh, pathological hypertrophy. Okay, so in pathological hypertrophy, Again, what happens is the cells of the heart, the myocardial cells, uh, are going to hypertrophy. They're going to get bigger. But the way they do it is not helpful. So remember in physiological hypertrophy, we saw that um, overall the heart sort of gets bigger and the volume of blood that it can pump through it is getting bigger. Whereas in pathological hypertrophy, what happens is more like this. So here is your heart. This is your original heart here with these four chambers. And what's going to happen is the walls of the heart are going to get bigger, but the actual heart isn't going to get any bigger at all. So the heart stays the same size, but all the walls of the heart get thicker. So let me draw this. So you've got massive, great, thick walls. Okay, and a massive, great, thick septum here. And you can see the instant problem. If the walls get thicker, what are they doing? They're, uh, they're go gaining in on the actual lumen of the chambers of the heart. So basically, the heart doesn't get any bigger. What happens is the chambers, the amount of blood that can actually sit in the chambers is going to get smaller because the walls of the heart are just going to grow in, basically, into the chambers. Okay, so this is what happens in um, pathological cardiac hypertrophy, okay? And for if we look at the um, cardiomyocytes, what's happening on the level of an individual cardiomyocyte, so let's take out an individual cardiomyocyte again. So here's our cardiomyocyte. So this is the one from the original heart. Then what happens? How does it hypertrophy? Basically this time, it gets thicker and thicker and thicker and doesn't really get that much longer. So it, its length does increase a little bit, but the main change in these um, cardiomyocytes is that 
they're getting thicker and thicker and thicker without that much increase in length. And this is why they grow like this. So they're not capable of extending the length of the walls uh, anymore, which was happening in the physiological hypertrophy, but instead they're just getting thicker and thicker, making the walls of the um, of the um, chambers much thicker, but meaning that the size of the chambers, the amount of blood in the chambers is going to get smaller and smaller. Okay, so if we were to write the inequality for this one, then the change in length this time, how much the length gets bigger, is much smaller than the change in width. So the Cardiomyocytes get thicker and thicker and thicker, uh, but don't actually get that much longer. Okay, and this is not going to help cardiac function. So you might be able to guess that when this happens, cardiac output is actually going to go down. Okay, and we'll continue our discussion of pathological hypertrophy in the next video.